call this meeting to order. Uh, please join us with, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first item on the agenda is public input. We have two people uh, signed in. We'll start with uh, William Joseph in regards to grandfathering. And I'll remind uh, both uh, individuals that we have, we'll limit you to five minutes. I'll keep track and give you a little heads up at about a minute left. Hello. Um, am I on? Everything okay? Where's the button? This one? Okay, now, now I'm on. Okay. Two months ago I was here bringing up an issue of grandfathering in, and I asked the consul if they would visit a trailer park there between Market and in Montana. I don't know if you've done it. I haven't received input from you, but I'm raising that issue again today because we're really allowing a recipe here for major sanitation problems, major safety issues, and major noise problems. What's happening here is that we, if we've created a high-density area of 14 trailers in a half a block, maybe a half an acre. I don't know how big it is. To have 30 plus dogs, 30 plus cars, and no playground for kids. We really want to live with that. This is exactly, in my opinion, why Peter Russell and his crew have up the standards for trailer parks. So this kind of thing does not happen. Well, that's good, but this is happening right in front of our eyes. Um, because of this grandfathering in clause, is this fair to the people who have to live there and around there? Um, do we want to up our standards of this town or are we going to let them degrade? This is not fair housing, which I see in the sign. We support fair housing. This is not. In fact, in my opinion, this is a prejudicial issue against low income people completely to allow this to occur. I don't know what can happen. I can't sit around and follow the mantra that we can't do anything. That's not acceptable in a situation like this. I know our, our, hand, our hands are tied in a lot of ways, but I think something could be done. I don't know what. So I'm asking you again to revisit that issue. If you have not gone through there, walk through there and see what's there. Would you Take your family and live there. Or no, but we'll allow those people. I don't think that's fair. So I got to walk by there every day and, and see this occur. And I feel like I want to do something. So that's why I'm here saying this. And I, I hope the council and the town manager, whoever, can take another look at that and see what we can do. Thank you. Thank you. Helen? in regards to Starsky Ridge or some major? Uh, good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Councilors. I'm Alan Long, resident of Silver City. I have talked about this is issue before and didn't want to bring it up again, but about a year and a half ago, I had told the Council then that uh, Starsky Ridge was some major over by Pope Street that goes all the way up to uh, 32nd Street. Uh, with a problem with trash, um, all kinds of litter, um, illegal drug use, all kinds of weird things happening. And I'm also concerned about fire as my neighbors are concerned. Um, just for example, July 4th was the most cars I've ever seen up there. I bet you it took an hour for all the cars to come down. And the next day there was trash, there was bottles, there was cans, there was all kinds of stuff. I mean, I wouldn't drive on that road. You'd, you'd definitely get a flat tire. But I knew something was eventually was going to happen. And last week, my neighbor who lives up behind me had a DWI hit and run, slammed his tracker from the driveway, through his front fence, drove the wheels into the ground and left. I still haven't gotten a person. Two days ago, three days ago, uh, my neighbors were was over there talking, did you hear about the deer? We went up and looked at it. It was already decomposed, but a deer had been hit, it looked like, 
And obviously, no one called. She finally called yesterday. Game and fish came and got it this morning. Um, I, when we were out there looking at deer, I saw syringes. I personally had a couple syringes in my front yard in the past couple of weeks. I just think it's it's really getting bad because I mean, there's people walking their dogs. There's kids up there playing, and. You know, I know there's been a reason given that it's own private property and the city has to have access. I understand all that. But there's only one house that actually is on that ridge, and that's my neighbor right behind me. There are no other houses all the way up to 23rd, um, 32nd Street. And people, you know, there were two ATVs up there today, four wheelers, kids riding up there. That's illegal, too. I mean, you're not even supposed to ride on the city street to get there. So I don't know what can be done. If nothing else, some signage at either end. You know, no loitering, no fireworks, no illegal activity, no litter. I mean, there are there are bags of pampers and diapers that are have been used that people just throw out. And uh, my neighbor also, she said, oh, yeah, somebody left the couch the other day. So I actually think it's getting worse. And people know they can go out there. I mean, I've called a non-emergency number several times about uh, motorcycles or four-wheelers up there, kids that don't have licenses, and either the police come or they don't come. But it's, it's almost like the kids all know, well, we can go up there and do anything we want to. And after this happened with his hit and run, that really got me concerned. And then with the deer, it's like, you know, what else is going to happen before it's really, really going to get bad? So I hope something can be done about it. I mean, I really believe there should be restricted access. There should be a chain from his house on, and it's only for fire trucks or whatever. That People just use it as a thoroughfare, and it's not a thoroughfare. So I just want to bring this to your attention because myself and my neighbors, we had a birthday party on Sunday for a whole bunch of neighbors, and we were, everybody was talking about it. So there is a lot of concern in our neighborhood about it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is council comments. Council Bettison. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so hopefully, um, I know that code enforcement's up in District 1, so hopefully they're up there noticing anything that's going on, um, Alan, uh, because uh, they, they had told me that they were going to be up there um, most of the month of July in District 1 um, for weed abatement. So um, I'll just take what you said and go forward with that. Um, which is a similar request I had for the area um, that Mr. Joseph talked about. So, um, so plastic bags. I know that folks have some some concerns. So, I'm going to do a little show and tell real quick. I like props. That's what happens when you're a teacher. So, the only bags that we are banning. Are these, and that doesn't go into effect for six months. Okay, so these are the single-use plastic carry-out bags that you usually get when you check out at the check stand. These bags, and yes, there's some really tasty nectarines in here, which I'm not necessarily going to share. I'd like to take them home with me. These bags, which are used to place your produce in or to put meats in so that you can make sure there's no contamination, they'll still be available. These are excluded. Some reusable plastic bags include the one from Bells. And it specifically states Reduce, reuse, recycle. This bag is designed to be reusable. Please reuse. So if you go shop somewhere like Bell's and they ha or somewhere else that has something like this, keep it and reuse it. And then when it's worn out, recycle. And then the last one, this is a really nice plastic bag with a little, car with a little cardboard bottom that I got at my vets. This is also reusable. Nice and thick and 
um, I use it often and I used it tonight. So just thought I'd show a couple examples. Um, I also wanted to uh, talk about the fact that it's summertime. And summertime means that kids are out around dusk and kids are out playing in the dark because it's nice and, well, hopefully cooler at night. So when you come up to a stop sign at night, at dusk, any time of day, and you quickly look to your left or right and then blow through it, what you're looking for is you're looking for vehicles. You're not looking for children that are playing, children that might be out in the road or off to the side that you're going to turn right on or do whatever you plan on doing. So I ask everyone to please stop at the stop signs and carefully look around, especially in residential areas. Um, there's been some near misses in my area, and I just hope that uh, that's not happening in other areas. So just take a minute and stop. And on the subject of stopping, at stoplights that are red, that means stop. And um, if you see everybody stopped all four ways, it's probably because the light's changing over from, you know, green to amber to red. Does it mean that you get to blast through because you're tired of waiting at your red light? Um, because other people like to blast through when it's yellow or amber. So um, please stop at the stoplights. I actually witnessed in the last two days six people running stoplights. Unfortunately, I was not close enough to get their license plate numbers. And I think it's critical to remember that when you speed through a stoplight like that, a red light, there can be an accident and you wouldn't necessarily want to cause one or be in one. And the last thing on a real positive note is the Silver City Clay Festival is coming up on July 30th through August 3rd. Um, you can get a copy of the July, um, I want to make sure, yep, Desert Exposure. It's got the schedule of events in it. Or you can go to clayfestival.com for a schedule of activities. Um, there's lots of free things to do, lots of workshops, lots of uh, exhibits to go see, lots of speakers, and I just encourage you to come down and join in the fun. Um, not this weekend, but the following weekend downtown Silver City because there will be lots of people um, visiting us just for uh, the Clay Festival. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Raymond Smith. Thank you, Mayor. When I was campaigning for my position as Councillor, I promised constituents of District 2 that I would have open community discussion meetings. That first meeting is going to be next Monday, the 28th, from 6.30 to 9 p.m. in the Western New Mexico University Student Memorial Building on the third floor seminar room. And I, of course, represent District 2, but anybody can come. So if you have some ideas, some interesting discussions, I invite you to, to come and discuss with us at least two things. If Silver City were your perfect place to live, what would you keep? And if Silver City were your perfect place to live, what would you change? Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Ray? No comment. Councillor Connor? No comment. I guess that leaves me. Um, you know, I've... Uh, this summer, with uh, with my kids off, I've I've been doing lots of uh, walking through the the trails, through the uh, the creek beds that that we have, and uh, up in Boston Hill, San Vicente Trail, PA Creek, and such. And, and it is amazing that uh, you know we we have a we're sitting on a gold mine right there. Um, now I I have some visions uh, of grandeur that that I would love to see us do but of course there's no money and and we we we've been told that uh, but hopefully in a in a couple years a decade or so ho hopefully we can we can continue to realize that that we have something special in in our uh, in in our paths our natural uh, uh paths for for hikers bicyclists and everything and and continue to keep that on the on our mind and, and work towards uh, doing something uh, real special here. I think uh, 
it'd be nice. My my kids love it. In fact, now I have to tell them that they can't go down those trails or, or at least too far because now they just want to go from my house on Pine Street all the way down to the golf course uh, and even though I did it at their age still not the most comfortable at, at letting my my daughters do so so just want to just keep that in uh, let everybody know that that we, we do have something special there please enjoy it uh, I, I encourage everybody w w as uh, summer wanes to uh, to utilize that and see what we have and, and come up with your, your own visions and, and uh, see how you can help in, in uh, making something nice uh, realized. Uh, on a second note, uh, just to uh, add to what Councillor Bettison was saying on the, um, the, the plastic bags, still want to convey an idea that we still have better than five months of figuring out how we're going to interpret, how we're going to implement this um, this ordinance we already I, I'm already finding that there's a lot of um, bad information I'm not going to say it's misinformation because I don't think it's by accident uh, but we have some bad information out there um, making it sound worse than it is uh, th there's already some planting seeds of, of how it's going to be interpreted that is nowhere near what we're looking at I've heard the idea that everybody that we're going to force people to abs force businesses to absolutely use recycled uh, paper bags, uh, something different than what they already have, and, and that's not the case. So, so be, uh, please be careful. And, and as as you receive information, um, use your critical thinking skills, just like uh, our our town has has really shown that they're it's good at. And, and read it and, and ask us questions and, and verify and, and continue to give us input over these next several months uh, so that we can implement this, uh, this ordinance uh, effectively and efficiently. Uh, anybody need round two? Councilor Benson? Thank you, Mayor. And um, I just want to say on top of the Mayor's comments about the recycled paper bags, um, there is an exemption in there that's excluded if you're currently using paper bags of any make, any type of paper bag um, to, um, you know, provide uh, your customers with, with what they've purchased. Those are excluded because that's one of the things if you carefully read what's excluded in the law. So there's going to be no requirement for you to change to a recycle, recyclable paper bags or uh, paper bags that contain recycled content because it's excluded if you currently are using them. And I know of at least several establishments that are currently using paper bags that they don't have to change that over. And um, um, just on top of what the mayor said, the other thing is this, we're not limiting any establishment, retail establishment, to only uh, providing recyclable um, or recycled paper bags, but they can provide, you know, any type of reusable bag, which includes these thicker plastic bags that I showed. I mean, they don't have to go strictly to to paper. Any reusable bag um, of any reusable material is is appropriate, and uh, they can also, um, like uh, I know the co-op has done for years, provide you with cardboard boxes. Um, to put your materials in. Um, so just wanted to, to kind of emphasize that um, on top of what the mayor just said. Thank you, Mayor. Anybody else? Next time on, on the agenda is changes to the agenda. Any changes? Next, Mayor. Um, can Mr. Brown? Can, um, C and D. Reverse them because the budget adjustment is included in the final quarterly report. So that way, we approve the budget adjustment before we approve the quarterly report. So, under new business, um, I will entertain a motion to uh, change C and D in the order. Mr. Mayor, I move to. Um C and B. C and B. Okay. Okay. C and B. Mr. Mayor, I move to uh, change the order of C and B so that C comes first and B second. I'll second. 
We have a motion and a second to to change under new business uh, item C and item B. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is approval of minutes. Uh, Councilor Cano. I move to approve the, break, the, meeting, the minutes of regular meeting July 8, 2014, as presented and with the following correction. Um, in section 5, paragraph 2, sentence 3 should read Councilor Cano commented on her recent surgery and how she would not be able to stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance for a couple of months. Mr. Mayor, I second the motion to stay there. We have a motion a second to approve the uh, regular meeting July 8, 2014 with the corrections presented and the correction uh, presented by Council Tano. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. Councilor Tano? Mr. Mayor, I move to approve the minutes of special meeting July 15, 2014. Mr. Mayor, I second the motion to stand. We have a motion a second to approve the minutes of the special meeting July 15, 2014. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is reports. Um, first one is year in tourism report from George Dorwin, uh, Executive Director of the Silver City Arts and Cultural District. Good evening, Mayor, Councilors. Thank you for allowing me to report to you. I want to thank the town on behalf of the Arts and Cultural District for your support of the organization in the promotion of the town of Silver City. I think we had a, a, a banner year in terms of moving the ball forward on behalf of tourism. And uh, I want to thank, um, in particular, uh, one of our primary partners who's going to report to you right after me, and that is the Southwest New Mexico Green Chamber and Sissy McAndrew for the partnership uh, that we've enjoyed and uh, their, their work is phenomenal and uh, I've learned a tremendous amount from working with Sissy and, and um, she's going to give you a, a way more dynamic presentation than I plan to. Um, I also want to thank Michelle Gills who uh, I work with every day who keeps Arts and Cultural District and Tourism humming along. Um, I presented to the councillors uh, and the mayor a, uh, a very, very brief pres presentation that I want to review with you uh, and on behalf for the community as well. A few of the year and facts of interest. Um, the first thing is that uh, the attractions are attracting. I wanted to start with a negative number so we could get it out of the way. That's the Gila Cliff Dwellings. As you can see there, was down 5%. This is reported from them. Um, one of the things that we have to remember from this past year was there was a federal closure, and that affected uh, the attendance out at the Cliff Dwellings. Um, we also know when we have fires, that also can affect our travelers. But uh, we do know the federal uh, closures had a tremendous impact and uh, so that is the only negative number I'm going to report this evening. The uh, Silver City Museum had a wonderful year, up 13%. Western New Mexico University Museum showing 5% increase. Uh, as you know also, moving to the next item on there, is Stop the Presses. We had a tremendous year, as you all know, for press coverage. New York Times, Huffington Post, Travel and Leisure, Smithsonian.com, Money Magazine, True West, New Mexico Magazine, and many uh, also radio and television spots. Next item, um, how may we help you? I'm going to leave this to Sissy to elaborate on, but the Visitor Center saw tr a, a really wonderful double-digit increase this, this past year in visitors. And we also uh, had... Uh, uh, a wonderful year in terms of uh, requests for information. We fulfilled 3,585 mailings to people requesting information throughout the Western United States 
primarily, but through, across the United States. Um, we also um, had tremendous success with our 101 campaign, which all of you are familiar with. The community embraced it tremendously, and we've just added a new piece to that just uh, in the last couple of weeks. These are man fans. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to pass those around, um, if I may. These uh, man fans also work as a postcard. It's our first time as a 101 postcard. We're giving them out free at the visitor center. We've uh, also had tremendous response to them from uh, Western New Mexico University. Has already sent out 900 of them. They requested another 500. Will, Western Institute of Lifelong Learning, has already distributed 450. The Council of Governments took 50 to Arizona with them recently. We've also distributed a miscellaneous 300 to other organizations. We encourage any organization uh, to come to us. We had a print run of 10,000. We'd like to see us distribute 20,000 within this year. Um, and I encourage all of you, when you're done fanning yourselves with them, turn it over. You'll see that there's a place for a stamp. It's a first-class stamp because it's an oversized postcard. Write a family or friend a postcard and invite them to Silver City, New Mexico. Um, one of the fun one one ones that we had uh, very recently was uh, a call, a request from a private citizen who uh, lived lives in Las Cruces, was coming to Silver City for their wedding and asked for 250 one ones so that they could put them in their wedding invitations. So uh, it has a lot of legs, and we're very very pleased with the one one campaign. Um, the, the other thing that's added to the postcard is that now we've changed it so that it has all of the festivals and events within the 101. Next item is the power of cooperation. Silver City uh, tourism basically started 20,000 down at the beginning of this past fiscal year. That's a deficit from, uh, we had a $40,000 grant from New Mexico tourism in the previous year. They granted us 20000 which we are very thankful for this past fiscal year. So in order to make up that 20000 we looked to areas within our own budget and ways to expand our cooperative efforts. Um, and uh, as you know, one of those was 32 local partners adding 10000 in purchasing power, which allowed us to buy bigger and wider and is yielding in results, I believe. Um, in addition to that, we, uh, we also um, took in-house our creative, all of our uh, graphic design, of which in our previous year's budget was in excess of 10000 and uh, we saved internally at least 10000 if not more, in this past fiscal year. So between those two, two things alone, we made up our deficit. Um, two areas that I'm also really pleased to report on. One is the our online efforts are showing record growth. Um, SilverCityTourism.org this past year saw a 27% growth in website new user traffic. And we also saw a 28% increase in the number of pages viewed in that time. Um, Facebook, its banner week, of course, was when we placed our uh, piece over Times Square and we had over 4,000 views in one, week, in one week to our Facebook account. And then uh, another area of wonderful growth for us was the Silver City calendar at silvercitytourism.org. Grew from uh, distant top 20 to number three consistently every single week uh, as the number uh, as uh, the top three pages viewed, and also it is the page with the longest um, time spent on it. 
Um, with that, that is a minor report. We had a lot of wonderful things happen this year. Um, to acknowledge one that you brought up, Mayor, is and thanks to the council and the and to Grant County was the initiative for the Continental Divide Trail, um, first gateway community. I think that's going to yield tremendous possibilities not only for visitor traffic but also for the type of funding that you're looking for mayor in the long run to develop our greenways trails we are um we are also expanding that i have just this week talked to um counterparts in cuba and or Cuba, however uh, you may want to pronounce it in new mexico as well as um um Chama. Both of those uh, are gateway communities as well. So we're already starting our collaborations at the northern part of the state, and I think that it's going to draw wonderful opportunities for Silver City and New Mexico. Any questions, comments? Any questions? I have a comment. Uh, Councillor Hammond Smith. Thank you for this uh, PDF with all these images and a really cool way to present. I just have a uh, brief comment. In the last month, I have met maybe four people who came to Silver City for a weekend from Austin. Mm -hmm. And all of them have said to me, you should really advertise in Austin. So can I send them to you next time that they come to town for a visit? By all means. Because they, there's a lot of geeks with money in Austin. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I'll send them to you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, George. Thank you. Next report is the quarterly final 2014 report of the Silver City Visitor Center. Uh, Sissy? Now for the rest of the story. Uh, first of all, I, I had a little... Uh, idea here but that wonderful demonstration uh, the councilman medicine put on I think it would be great to videotape her and have that I'm serious and have that on the city website to explain the plastic bags I think the more we look at you know I was I was really uh, pleased to hear words that I use quite often that uh, the mayor used, which is educate critical thinking and making intelligent decisions. So I think that's a wonderful opportunity that we already have in place, the uh, town website. And I think you did an absolutely wonderful job. So I'd encourage the city to look at uh, putting something out there to help citizens be able to just go right out and have uh, a visual to go along with it. Um, I'm pleased to be here this evening. Uh, this is not the end, it's a new beginning. Um, we have uh, transitioned at this point. Arts and Culture will be managing the Visitor Center. I'm very pleased to report that they're keeping the staff that we had on board, Marion Graff, who is uh, working on uh, continuing to get volunteers, and I want to put the word out. Uh, we're always looking for volunteers, so please, if you're at all interested, uh, give them a call at 538-5555 and volunteer your time. It's very, very rewarding. Uh, also, Rebecca Martin, who uh, is just a phenomenal uh, statistician and does a great job, and she's the one that put these slides together tonight for my presentation, and I think we're just thrilled to have her on board. Uh, it, it, it takes a lot of different knowledge to uh, do the work that's going on there, and I think there's a fantastic team now in the way that uh, Kendra Milligan's been brought in to work on the calendar. Uh, we're literally doing what we talked about several years ago, which is uh, the dream team, and uh, that's who's serving our community now, and I think it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, for the fourth quarter, we... Uh, did see growth. Uh, you can see basically the uh, the green areas that's growth each month in visitation. Uh, I do want to point out to you that in July uh, we actually did not have uh, three three years ago we did not have a July figure because uh, the lodgers tax meeting was not held until the very end of July, and we took over the visitors center as far as operating it uh, seven days a week. We took that over on August first. So uh, that one month, you actually did not see three bars. 
Uh, this is always the interesting item for us. It does tie back into advertising and marketing. Normally it takes about three months for somebody to show up once they've read an, uh, read an ad or especially in those national publications. Um, but we are continuing to see growth in New Mexico. More people are coming down here. Uh, we're not very far away. And uh, also the, the southwest area of Arizona, California, Colorado, and Texas. Uh, some of the Sunset Magazine ads, that's a regional publication. So uh, we're, we're getting to see the response to the advertising and marketing that's going on. Uh, this is basically talking to us about the top states, and we do see that New Mexico uh, is having the most visitors, and uh, this is just for the last quarter. And uh, once again, these are people that come into the visitor center. I was in a meeting with the Realtors Association last Thursday, and we're talking about what we can do because we feel uh, tourism is the icing on the cake, but we want people to move here. And so I was saying, you know, back in the old days when I was running the Silver City Grant County Chamber of Commerce, I'd get people driving in with a U-Haul, and they'd say, we're moving here. And I said, you know, that doesn't happen anymore. People are out on the Internet. And sometimes the first contact with our community is they'll get in touch with a realtor. So we are going to try to find ways that we can coordinate with the Arts and Cultural District and really get the message out that it's a great place to visit, but it's a wonderful place to live. And we realize that we need to do that uh, as we look at measurements. These are great numbers. We need to look at lodger's tax. We need to look at gross receipts tax. And we even need to look at the gas tax. And we need to try to find ways that we can bring more money back into our community. So we, need, we know we need to expand what we're doing, and that's really the direction the Green Chamber is headed in. We are seeing here a growth in the number of nights that people are staying, and yet we have a lot of folks that are just driving through Silver City, and they tell us they're going to be back, but we need to find a way to get people to stay more nights. This is another one that's, uh, you've pretty much seen this chart, it's been the same, uh, and this is a, a bar chart which is showing us a combination of the 12 months, and we're seeing Sundays is still a really, really low day of visitation. So what we're going to be doing is working with the merchants and talking to them about, can you stay open seven days, if not, which day is best for you to close, and what can we do to uh, make sure folks have something to do when they come here, but also to let them know we're a real community. And Sunday is a day of rest and a day of family, and so you may not find the shops open. Come here, experience that on Saturday, and on Sunday go up to the cliff dwellings. Go to the museums, but don't expect to be shopping downtown because it probably is not going to be a reality in the near future that we can have the majority of our shops open. Uh, this is a very interesting graph, and, and uh, this is one that the county commission asked to have. And they wanted to see the response to events and how that really impacted visitation. Uh, we see the Clay Festival is really big, and a lot of that is because the visitor centers open at 7 in the morning so that when people are getting ready to go out on tours or the, the Gila River Festival, we've got the facilities open for them. Also, the 4th of July. Uh, the tour of the Gila. But otherwise, we're seeing it's really pretty consistent as far as uh, the number of people because you took a look at the Blues Festival. The Arts Council does such a great job of advertising. Everybody kind of knows where that is. They don't need to come into the visitor center and ask where the park is. Same thing happens with the Gem and Mineral Show. People know where the conference center is. So this was an interesting graph to run. But we have not found to where visitation ties back at the visitor center to events. And then this is the top ten attractions that George was talking about. Uh, of course, the cliff dwellings uh, tends to still be number one, but downtown is number two. And people are coming, they're experiencing what a great community we have, 
and that's part of, of what we need to continue to hold on to. Uh, as we start getting these national articles and we start getting recognition, we don't want to change our quality of life and who we are. So that's going to be something I'll talk to you about in a moment that the Green Chamber is really taking on now as, as one of our areas of focus, and that's called civic tourism. And then how people heard about us. Word of mouth is still number one. So when people are coming in, it's a matter of telling them, if you've had a great time, go home and tell your families and friends. Go out on social media. Get the word out. This is a great place to come. Uh, and then basically we're starting to get more as far as publication, but as George will tell you, we can get those hits on the website. We really don't know. Uh, a lot of times, unless he's got that cued, we don't know really where those hits are coming from. And another thing I want to talk to you about tonight is, is something that we need to look very seriously at. And that is, is all the city money going in to advertising and marketing our community. We need to get everybody that's, that's getting responses from people to start working together to combine, combine our data so that we can have a stacked bar graph between silvercity.org and silvercitytourism.org. And we can literally see when the, when the hits are up, does that tend to respond to something we've done as far as marketing and advertising? We owe it to ourselves. The community deserves to have that information shared. And one of our biggest words is transparency. So I'd like to encourage the, the council uh, to go ahead and support that and try to see what we can do to get all the entities that are basically tying back into responding to the public on tourism and about our community to work together and give us a real picture of what's happening. And then this is tied back into the different types of publications. When we're looking at this, again, it's really hard when somebody comes into the visitor center for them to figure out right off the bat, gee, where did I read that? Or how did I hear about it? But these are from response cards that are coming in from the publications. Uh, so we know that we've got uh, people responding. We know where their uh, addresses are. All of that is, is into a database. But it's allowing us to start seeing where responses are, where additional monies can probably generate uh, greater return for the dollar. And again, I know that the council is looking at measurement and how do we continue to do a better job. The national press has been fantastic. Uh, New Mexico Magazine. You can't really put a dollar value when you have a third party writing things about your community that are positive. So we just really, uh, 10 years ago we were doing this and then we kind of dropped off the face of the earth. It's been a long, long road getting back, but we're there and it's just going to continue. Uh, the travel and leisure article, uh, coolest desert towns. I want to discuss a little bit with you the climate that has a huge impact on us. If we're cold in the winter, people are looking and they're saying, you know, you're no warmer than we are. And right now in the summer where we've had the high heats and the humidity, uh, we're not getting the folks that are coming up to cool off as much. So uh, that's out of our control. But it is something that we can look at that and talk about that and market it when it's appropriate. And then, uh, again, just looking at the uh, visitation data here um, against the different quarters, and we see the growth uh, for all, all across the year for each quarter we've grown. 9%, and this is from the, uh, you'll see from last year to this year, and that, I have a pillar in front of me, so I'll let you read that one. 24% uh, and 6% in this last quarter. So this is what we're looking at as far as uh, visitation, and you can see it's the direction we want to have it go in. We're growing. This is the total number of visitors that we have hosted since the Southwest New Mexico Green Chamber has been hosting the Visitor Center, and it has been a total honor for us. We really appreciate having had the opportunity, and uh, I think now we're moving from public relations into community relations, and we're looking forward to that as well. 
and civic tourism is an area that we're moving into. And uh, what that is is really maintaining our sense of place. So we had workshops a couple months ago. We brought in Dan Schilling, the author of the civic tourism book. We worked with merchants, we worked with citizens, and now we are going to continue to do that so that we don't lose the silver city that we know and we love. There was our business round table and we are having these round tables every month with the merchants and then we had a breakout session with Will and we are continuing to collaborate and partner with others. And our future, uh, we are basically going to be working very strong downtown now. We have a storefront at 406 North Bullard Unit B which is the All Soul Theater and in opening up that space we now have the owner in town and the B unit will be rented. It just gotten the water fixed and we will also be renting the two offices upstairs. This is what we need to see to change downtown. Civic tourism I spoke to you about. The Merchants Association, we're getting very strong with them. I've spoken with the chief and we're going to be getting together so that when there's a street closure, uh, the Green Chamber can go downtown and tell everybody what's going on, when it's going on, is there a marketing opportunity, but turn it into something positive instead of suddenly having streets shut off and businesses feel they just might as well close. And then buy local. Uh, this is what the businesses have requested. This is what we've been about all the time. It's getting the local people to buy local, get our gross receipts stacked up, uh, have local discount cards. We'll be fostering that. Also entrepreneurship. Uh, we've been doing a lot of that in-house and we're also starting to work with the university and also all the Leopold Charter School for entrepreneur classes. And then our investment opportunity network which can help small businesses or startup businesses by matching them with private f uh, funds to help them grow where they need to grow. And we're now looking at a business incubator and we're looking at a downtown location. Again, we are ready to grow business but the type of business that we want in Silver City. And our partnerships. Uh, we've got the, the Visitors and Relocation Guide, which is just getting ready to be completed. Uh, Wayfair and restroom signs, we're working with Main Street. They had the Wayfaring sign program started up, and then the Silco was taking so much time, they put it on the back burner. We're working very closely with them to try to continue that and move that forward. This was one of the mayor's ideas. Uh, a parking lot sign for the visitor center that says historic downtown, park here. Second Saturdays, so instead of first Fridays where people could not get up here in time, we're looking at trying to start a second Saturdays program. They'll come up Friday night, they'll stay Saturday, hopefully Sunday and then go home and we'll be able to get more lodging nights. We're working with Main Street on the Facade Squad. Uh, the Diamond Gym building has been sitting there and complete and we're ready to move forward on that. And I just think Main Street's got a wonderful new director and we can't wait to work with that new manager. He's got great ideas and great skills and we've already had several meetings and written a grant to work on together. Continental Divide Trail, as George mentioned, that's going to be huge for our community. And then we're also working with the uh, Chicano Music Festival and our favorite, the Tamal Fiesta. And we're combining that with the Lighted Christmas Parade. So people will come downtown the Saturday after Thanksgiving for Tamal Fiesta and they will stay for the Lighted Christmas Parade and they will buy, buy, buy all day long. That's our report. Once again, I just want to thank you for the many years of, of collaboration that we've had. We look forward to moving forward with you. And as I mentioned, uh, we really feel that it's uh, our role now to do community relations. If you've got any ideas, just as the mayor had for us, we're, we're ready to start implementing, hit the ground running. Uh, but we look, we look forward to a very bright future for uh, Silver City and Historic Downtown. Any questions for Susan? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, uh, Councilor Ray. You are interested in having tourism all over Silver City and Grand County, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Have you ever studied 
of how many people go camping like in the Saturn and the Great Vines? I, we, have, we have been gathering some data, but that's one of the challenges for us. They come in and get materials, even RVs, and then they're gone. Uh, they'll, they'll ask us about campgrounds, and we provide them information, but that is not data that's coming back to us. When they're out in the forest, uh, we don't really end up getting that information back. Can you work with the Forest Service that has some sort of a brochure then saying what you enjoyed? Work at, uh, camping out there? I'll tell you that there's a lot of people that for the 4th of July, it is packed. I went this past weekend and they had the, the bow shooting, the bow uh, members, mm -hmm. and it was packed. And I just, maybe you can consider that. Because they do go by locally and they go maybe a couple times during the weekend. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Staff reports. Mr. Brown? Both Mayor and Council, I just have a couple. Um, first, I want to congratulate Tim Heidrich. He's the new fire chief as of Monday. Um, also, uh, earlier this week, we had a meeting with uh, Senator Morales and with the representative Martinez. Uh, concerning the essential air service, uh, the the federal government has put the uh, RFP out uh, for essential air service, and they're asking for community input on on routes and what recommendations of what they would like to see from the air service. As you know, uh, last last time we went from going to Albuquerque, Silver City twice a day to 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 now the service that we have, which is Phoenix. Um, is it more beneficial to continue going to Phoenix or is it better for us to start looking at going back to Albuquerque or, or, or another route? Santa Fe, Denver, um, which was proposed last time, was one of the proposals last time. So um, I'd like, um, uh, because of the lack of uh, time to have an actual council action for direction, um, I'd like to hear some some input on, on what we'd like to see. I'll, I'll start off with some, some basic comments. Um, when, when we went to uh, Phoenix, there was, you know, there was a, the idea that it was going to be a, a larger hub, uh, which, which would give more access to, to our citizens to a, a broader spectrum of, of air travel. Um, and, and there was also a little, uh, there was conversation of this aiding the, uh, the, the, mine, the mines, uh, FMI and allow them to, to utilize it to, to Phoenix, to their headquarters. And I remember the idea being that we would have our normal travelers, our normal travel numbers uh, of our citizens, uh, whether they be in government, health care, uh, university, um, and just basic travelers, and that going to Phoenix would, would build upon that and then add the, the, the mines travelers to that. From what I've gathered, that has not been the case. What we've done is uh, the university doesn't use it. The, um, the hospital doesn't use it. Uh, our city, most governments don't use it because they all need to go to Albuquerque. Um, we haven't added really any other travelers as as uh, over this last few years what has happened is there was an immediate uh, drop off of of travelers so we were running um, I'm just going to use some generic numbers, round, very rounded numbers, uh, where we might, where we went from like three, three thousand passengers to two thousand passengers, and that has only uh, been supplemented by FMI um, travelers to where we are about e equal. So it's it's uh, it's my take that all we've done is we're serving the same number of people, but we're actually having our essential air service. Um, subsidizing a private business and reducing uh, those entities that actually uh, were were initially intended to be subsidized and that is our healthcare professionals, our university professionals, our, our other government professionals and our citizens and I 
I'm of the uh, opinion, and, and this is mainly from input I have received from a, a number of individuals, that we were better served going to Albuquerque. And, and I, I, for one, would like to give a little bit of guidance that we, we at least strongly um, convey the idea that our, our community is served with uh, an Albuquerque truck. Uh, Councilor Bettison. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would agree with the Mayor. Um, one of the um, issues that I've heard uh, people have commented to me is that, um, you know, things that have happened in the past sometimes, you know, the flights didn't come down from Albuquerque, but there seems to be more frequency of those individuals that actually do go to Phoenix can't get home and end up, in many cases, renting a car to get back to uh, Silver City. And that sort of defeats the purpose of making it um, easier for um, our folks to, to get out to a bigger airport, so to speak. So um, I think that uh, more uh, potential county and municipal folks as well as university and other folks would, would prefer that, that route to Albuquerque, which is you know a large enough airport for them to get out to a variety of different places. Um, a lot of folks do go to Santa Fe, um, especially during a legislative session, but that can easily be um, accomplished by flying into Albuquerque and, and taking rail runner or driving. So um, I, I think that that's something to, to maybe be, be looked at, but definitely I think uh, going somewhere in the northern route, going to, to Albuquerque um, would be beneficial to us to regain uh, you know, uh, folks using that and maybe perhaps expanding the use. Adding to that just, uh, just a little bit, um, even if there was the opportunity for a Santa Fe flight um, on the flip side, they could also fly to Santa Fe and ride Rail Runner back down to Albuquerque, which would still be, um, benef which would be, I believe, more beneficial and more in line with what um, uh, those constituents I've spoken to um, would like. Councilor Emmett Smith? I too want to put in a word about my own experience of uh, my partner who died of cancer and needed to go to Albuquerque. And we took a flight as long as we could, and then when the flights changed to Phoenix, we could no longer fly, so we had to drive. And I know that when we were flying up there for Albuquerque for his particular medical treatment, um, there were other patients uh, every time on the plane, so as well as medical professionals. I urge just to think about medical patients. Any other guidance and uh, opinions you'd like to give in this regard? Uh, since it's been solicited, uh, George. Thank you. Um, we, when I first took the job, uh, we, we were working closely with Great Lakes uh, to see how we could utilize it for tourism. Um, it became very quickly apparent that they were unreliable. They were not living up to the terms of their contract. There were too many canceled flights, too many stranded people, and we invested uh, a portion of money into advertising with them that really did not yield anything for us. I would also, uh, whoever is considered in the bid process, uh, Great Lakes Corporate, when I spoke to them, they only saw Silver City as an outbound. Um, they had no uh, vision of Silver City as an inbound potential for them. And from a tourism standpoint, I would like to encourage that that be something considered in the bid process. How would this airline also consider us as a destination inbound from Albuquerque or whatever destination is uh, appropriate? I, I agree with that. And, and just uh, real quickly, on that note, um, we're, we're we're being solicited for our input on this uh, this process. Could you talk a little bit on, on your knowledge on what uh, the process is and, and who uh, conducts the the RFPs and, and awards the contracts? Yes, yes the uh, FAA, FAA uh, does the RFP, and it is basically for the essential air service, which is a, a subsidized air service program to service uh, rural communities. And so basically 
they're the ones that make the decisions and, and do the negotiations, but they want to use our input um, to for those negotiations. Uh, as the I believe the RFP closes on the 12th of August. Uh, so um, if if we wait till the next meeting, it will actually close on that day, so they will not get our our input. Um, so. Um, you know, I just take this information that we gather and, and, and submit input to them. Uh, Sissy, you want to add something to that? Yes, and Alex, I can't believe, uh, remember if you were in the position or Tom Bates was, but um, years ago, and this is like I want to say 05, 04, 05, and we had Mesa Airlines coming in and we had these great coupons and we had, you know, flights up to Albuquerque for I think $68 or something. I mean, it was fantastic. And I'm so glad that the uh, air service has contacted the town because what happened then, they did not talk to the town. They went to the county commission and it seemed like there was something uh, behind the scenes. We had a meeting in this room in the evening where the community came and we listened to what Mesa said and we listened to what Great Lakes said and Great Lakes, oh, we're going to have a mechanic there. We're going to just, I mean, boy, they just told us some wonderful stories. And afterwards, the community all said, we want to stay with Mesa. Well, the next morning, I was heading up to actually testify at the legislature, and uh, I called up Henry Torres because I wanted to be sure that he knew that where we were all coming from, I was actually with the other chamber at the time, and I called Henry up right and early, and he said, well, sis, there's some things you don't know about. And I thought, Henry, please don't tell me that you can't tell we're not comparing apples to apples here. Well, the vote went uh, the other way. And I actually went into a meeting, then Diane Hamilton was sitting on the committee and I told her and she was just fit to be tied. So what ended up happening after that, I came back down and we actually had the hospital, we had the mines, we had major businesses that said we want to write a letter. And the town also wrote a letter and they allowed for some public input. But they still went with the county's decision and we've been paying for it ever since. So I'm, I'm really pleased that the town's been asked to participate. And everybody I've heard from, Albuquerque's where we need to be going. Uh, I have not heard of pretty much anybody unless they're catching a connecting flight through, to, uh, through Phoenix that are using that air service at all. Thank you. I, you have your guidance. It looks like Albuquerque, Santa Fe is the uh, preference. Uh, very quickly. I just wanted to say that I used to fly Great Lakes all the time to Albuquerque because you could either fly through Dallas or through Atlanta on Delta. But I got stranded so many times. I got stranded here for three days. I saw all my connections. I got stranded in Albuquerque a couple of times. I've had other friends that have been stranded on Great Lakes and none of them fly Great Lakes anymore. I don't know whether New Mexico Airlines is, is in the bidding, but I, from what I've heard, their response has been good to Roswell and Hobbs. They're a division of Hawaiian Airlines, some, some Hawaiian Airlines, so, but I don't know if they're part of the bidding process, but from my experience over the nine years I've been here, Great Lakes has not been very reliable. And it seems like added to that guidance is we may, if, if it's appropriate, uh, indicate our displeasure with Great Lakes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Alex. Any, anything else? Uh, also, uh, just, um, I'm not positive, but I, I'm, almost, I'm almost positive that uh, Peter did tell me that they're looking to start the chip sale project, yeah. the big chip sale project here at, at, at the beginning of August. So I want the, the public, the neighborhoods, it's going to be quite a few roads that they're going to be chip sale. Uh, so the public be, be ready um, and, and the department will go out and notify the, the residents that they'll make sure that their vehicles are off the street and, and all that stuff uh, prior to the, them going through. Uh, so uh, just just be aware that, that that'll be starting pretty soon. Uh, Councilor, Is there going to be some sort of schedule that we can access on the town website about that program? Uh, as soon as it's ready, uh, we'll, we'll try to get some. 
something on the website and um, and you know when it comes to construction it all never go comes <laughs> according to schedule but we'll do the best that we can. Any other questions for Alex? Thank you, Alex. Uh, any reports, Chief? Chief? Uh, no other staff reports. Next item on the agenda is... Break. Is, <laughs> is <laughs> Councillor <laughs> Pedersen. No, Councillor Amos Smith. Mr. Mayor, I move for a short break. I second the motion. We have a motion, a second for recess. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are in recess. <laughs> Call this meeting back to order. Next item on the agenda under new business. Uh, approval, disapproval of resolution number 2014-27, a resolution of the town of Silver City ratifying a certain agreement between the town of Silver City and the Southwest New Mexico Council of Governments, uh, dated July 22nd. 2014 and authorizing the execution of same by the proper official of the town of Silver City. Uh, Mr. Brown. Uh, Madam Council, this is an annual uh, resolution that's required to uh, for the participation in the Council of Governments. Uh, the Council of Governments provides us most municipalities and governmental entities as a whole many different services. Um, such as helping with grant writing, um, you know, getting us access to local government, uh, state government entities. Uh, I mean, they, they do the gambit. Right now, they're, they're doing as much as the fiscal agent for local governments for grants and tips, things like that. Uh, but they, they supply the town. They actually are located in one of our buildings, which is actually some in-kind funding. But that's done on purpose because we have first-hand access to them better than anybody else. Um, so it's, it's my recommendation to, to uh, move forward with this agreement. Any questions for Alex? Uh, Councilor Bredesen? Yes, thank you, Mayor. I don't have a question or a comment. Um, that uh, it's been said in the past, and so I'll say it again, for $4,500, they do so much for us. I mean, I mean, they do more than that. They do, you know, a hundred times what we're giving them, um, even including um, the in kind with the space. Um, the, I have to say, and I'll have to brag on the Southwest um, New Mexico Council uh, of Governments because uh, so many of my colleagues and other municipalities wish that they had our Southwest New Mexico Council of Governments working for them. Um, they're they're sharp. They're on the ball. They're um, you know Priscilla is always always there, and um, and it just is. Um, I'm proud that uh, that we have such a great um, a group to to facilitate what we need and to help us along the way. Because there's uh, like I said, many municipalities that would like it just to be over in their section of New Mexico. Mm -hmm. so, thank you, Mayor. Mr. Councilor Amos Smith. I do want to put in a, a word of experience with the New Mexico, Southwest New Mexico Council of Governments. Uh, they are facilitating this broadband assessment program, which has been going on for a while now, from which we have learned so much. And tomorrow, there is going to be a, the, a liaison from the Department of Transportation doing a workshop there that is really going to be specifically for our area. Our, Area Transport Authority. So they really do a lot. And I uh, ask you, Mr. Brown, is there anything that particularly that they have helped you with that you would like to bring to light for the public? It's really hard to to put in words because I get calls from Priscilla almost every other day, on updating me on information on things that are happening at the state level, on on. Uh, she's she's always her and her staff are always at the state level advocating for Southwest New Mexico. I mean, they keep up, keep me and our local local governments very apprised of what's actually happening at the state level. We're probably more informed, better informed than 
any local governments in the state of New Mexico, and and uh, and they do an excellent job in in what they do. I mean, even just facilitating discussions between local governments, and uh, you know, uh, it's it's uh, always a pleasure. And, and uh, if I don't know who to ask ask something, it's ask Priscilla, and she'll figure it out for you. So. Uh, and I would like to just um, piggyback on that. Uh, yes, they, they've been wonderful. Um, even though we brag on our staff a lot here in the town of Silver City, um, I'm not sure we could make a position uh, and do that good of a job for, for anywhere remotely close to the amount that, that we give to the Council of Governments. And, and Priscilla's been, uh, she's personally helped me on a, on a number of issues uh, over the last uh few years even as a counselor and, and I'm sure for our new counselors um, you'll utilize her uh, in these upcoming years um, great great asset great asset uh, Councilor Bedson so Mr. Mayor um, I move to approve resolution number 2014-27 a resolution of the town of Silver City ratifying a certain agreement between the town of Silver City and the Southwest New Mexico Council of Governments dated July 22, 2014, and authorizing the execution of same by the proper official of the town of Silver City, and designating uh, Mr. Brown as the public official to be the member of the Southwest New Mexico Council of Governments. I can't remember if I'm alternate one or alternate two. I'm alternate one. Uh, you're alternate two. Peter's yeah. alternate one because it's the RPO chair. Peter Pena. Yeah. Peter Pena as alternate one. And uh, Councillor Cynthia Bettison as alternate two. I will second that motion, Ms. Red. We have a motion a second for approval of resolution number 2014-27, a resolution of the Town of Silver City ratifying a certain agreement between the Town of Silver City and the Southwest New Mexico Council of Governments dated July 22, 2014, and authorizing the execution of same by the proper official of the Town of Silver City designating Alex Brown as our representative with Peter Pena as the uh, uh, first de uh, designee and, and Councillor Besson as the second. Uh, designee. Any further discussion? We have a motion second as read into the record. Roll call. Councilor Benson? Aye. Councilor Amos Smith? Aye. Councilor Ray? Aye. Councilor Cotton? Aye. Motion carries. Just uh, for your uh, notes, some of you may have noticed that I um, paused when I was reading that uh, first um, item on the agenda. With all these fans flying around, as I was reading, I actually thought, am I on the wrong agenda item? <laughs> so, so I'll try not to pay it, use my peripheral vision too much. <laughs> but next item on the agenda, approval, disapproval of resolution number 2014-25, a resolution amending the approved and adopted budget for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2013 through Ju June 30, 2014, and for municipal purpose in the town of Silver City, New Mexico, transferring and appropriating funds thereof. Uh, Mr. Brown. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, the, this resolution approves the second budget adjustment second and final budget adjustment for fiscal year 2014. The budget adjustment uh, brings all increases in our revenues to uh, actual revenues uh, realized through the year, expenses to actual expenses realized through the year, and transfers uh, that actually ended up having to happen. Um, most transfers uh, that changed were because, um, for instance, uh, uh, the public safety tax didn't realize as much revenue as, as we initially projected to pay the debt service for the, the uh, ladder truck. So we had to reverse that and do a transfer from the general fund for that one. So basically all it does is zeroes everything out uh, for the quarterly report. Uh, there's nothing really major, major changes. Um, the most everything's minor. Um, uh, and 
I stand for any questions for any of the council Thank you, Mayor. Um, so this will make it so that there's no $2 finding that we didn't transfer. Because <laughs> you know how that, that kind of, that was like the one thing. Um, was it was last year's budget. Yeah. Last year. yeah. And uh, we're going to go over this one, one more time before we send it out. <laughs> to make sure it's 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 exactly right, but we will make sure. And so, if there's any changes from what is approved here, it's going to be a two dollar or or small things like that. Not like a hundred thousand, like fifty thousand. That that's great. I mean, I just I just wanted to bring that up because that is one of the reasons why we're doing this now is so we don't get caught um, uh, when we have our audit with some municipal two dollar finding that we didn't somehow transfer I think we didn't transfer it in or something like that. I think well there's a nine thousand dollar one or something too. Right. Yes, last year was Anita's first year doing it. And she was thrown into the position right. with very not a lot of training, so being two dollars off, she did an excellent job. She did. And I, and I don't mean any offense. I just it's just something that was caught by the by the state and, and by the auditor. So um, I think this, I appreciate it, it coming before us now, and I appreciate the um, um, how the due diligence that, that Anita does and that everyone in the department does to make sure that that uh, everything will be copacetic with our budget for the audit. So thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Brown? Uh, Council Bergson. Ms. Winger, I move to approve resolution number 2014-25, a resolution amending the approved and adopted budget for the fiscal year commencing July 1st, 2013 through June 30th, 2014, and for a municipal purpose in the town of Silver City, New Mexico, transferring and appropriating funds thereof. We have a motion and a second for approval of resolution number 2014-25, a resolution amending the approved and adopted budget for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2013 through June 30, 2014, and for municipal purpose in the town of Silver City, New Mexico, transferring and appropriating funds thereof. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have a motion and a second as read into the record. Uh, roll call. Councilor Benson? Aye. Councilor Evan Smith? Aye. Councilor Ray? Aye. Councilor Pino? Aye. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is approval disapproval of resolution number 2014-24, final quarter financial report year ending June 30, 2014. Mr. Brown? Mayor Council, this resolution uh, approves uh, the final a quarterly report that uh, we will uh, be submitting to DFA. Uh, it is the final ending balances uh, for revenues, transfers, and expenditures uh, that resulted uh, from the operations of the town of Silver City over last last fiscal year. And it does include. And it does include the previous uh, budget adjustments. Uh, any uh, questions for Mr. Brown? No, sir. No, sir. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Councilor Raymond Smith? Okay. Mr. Mayor? Councilor? I move to approve resolution number 2014 24, final quarter financial report, year ending June 30th, 2014. We have a motion, a second for approval of resolution number 2014-24, final quarter financial report year ending June 30, 2014. Any further discussion? We have a motion, a second, as read into the record. Roll call. Councilor Benson? Aye. Councilor Amon Smith? Aye. Councilor Ray? Aye. Councilor Connor? Aye. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, can I move for a short break? My iPad has decided to freeze and not uh, go to the next item on the agenda. So I need to get someone with more strength than I to slap the side of this till it goes back in. <laughs> yes, that's my intention. I'll second the motion. We have a motion to second for a short recess. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? We're in recess. I call this meeting back to order. Next item on the agenda, approval, disapproval of resolution number 2014-26, approval and adoption of the budget for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2014 through June 30, 2015. Mr. Brown. Madam Council, basically uh, what you have in front of you is the uh, preliminary budget with updated beginning cash balances for all the budgets and any minor changes that might have had to be uh, made um, uh, to expenditures. Uh, the one thing that wasn't caught was the revenue, which you got the email about for the fire protection because uh, Anita got the actual actual numbers. So, um, and there was one debt service uh, fund that was not included, which was the uh, Silco renovations. The Silco renovations that we just uh, and that was included in, in this current budget. Any questions for Mr. Brown? I, I don't. Councilor Bebson. Oh, thank you, uh, Mayor. I, actually, a question on the um, the list of uh, I think this is in the back of this one. Isn't the list of the gross receipt taxes and things like that in the back of this? Yes. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to to note for folks that um, the. Uh, we have um, another dedication that's listed here, and I was presuming that might have meant the uh, the, uh, the omnibus tax bill hold harmless because that's not even on this list. Oh. Hold harmless DRT is not even on this list, even though that was something that was uh, um, approved legislatively in 2013. No, no, because uh, all this list is it lists that everything that was. Uh, that has been approved by the legislature. Um, the thing with DFA, they have not updated all their forms. So had we had we adopted uh, a cold harmless uh, um, increment, we would have put it under other dedications <coughs> at, at the bottom. Thank you. I just wanted to note that for folks that might be looking at this. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Brown? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Sir, Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve resolution number 2014-26, approval and adoption of the budget for fiscal year commencing July 1, 2014 through June 30, 2015. Council We have a motion and a second for approval of resolution number 2014-26, approval and adoption of the budget for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2014 through June 30, 2015. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. We have a motion and a second as read into the record. Roll call. Mm -hmm. Councilor Benson? Aye. Councilor Anderson? Aye. Councilor Ray? Aye. Councilor Cotta? Aye. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda, approval, disapproval of bid number 14-15-1, Silco Interior Renovations. Uh, Mr. Brown. Uh, Mayor Council, the town received uh, two uh, uh, proposals uh, for two bids for uh, bid of uh, number 14-15-1, the Silco Theater Renovations, one from Bigelow Construction, and the second from Haven Construction. Both bids are exceed the budgeted uh, <coughs> funds available for the project, but uh, the town and Main Street have identified a, some possible grant funding that we would like to to investigate that we might be able to have in place before the next council meeting. So I would like to recommend that we postpone uh, action on this item until the next council meeting. Okay. Is there any questions for Alex? Okay. Mr. Brown, sorry. And, and the reason being is, is this way we don't have to go back out for a bit if we're able to, to get those grant funding. Since this is the, the second time we've gone through and we have a, a, a second bidder, it's, we're, feeling, we're starting to feel pretty comfortable that these are, these are the numbers that, that we are 
We the should market, be expecting. Yes, they're market numbers. Because they're fairly, fairly perfect. Not so, far, far apart. so at this at this point in time, what we're really looking for is we just need to bridge the gap uh, from our previous expectations to to what these are. Yes. Is there anything that uh, Main Street would like to add to that to the discussion? Thank you. Read your name into the record. I'm Lissy Whitmarsh, and I'm the president of the board for the Silver City Main Street, and mayor, council, staff, and um, community members. Um, as you know, um, we've been working together as a community to um, get movies back to our downtown, and we see this as a great opportunity for our community and a great community builder, and also um, a great opportunity for advancing the economic development in our downtown and so um, we certainly do want to move this on as fast as we can and so I, I really thank you for considering extending it um, to the next council meeting to give us the opportunity to get the funds so that we are able to um, move forward on the project and I would really appreciate that support thank you would any, um, any any other member of the public like to speak on this issue? So we have a recommendation. A staff rec staff recommends to postpone to the next meeting or to a future date. What's actually a future date? A Just future in case, postpone to a future date future would be. Preferred. Preferred. That way, just in case the project takes a little bit longer to finalize, um, if it if it goes through. Perfect. Uh, Council Bettison. Mr. Mayor, I move to postpone resolution number twenty. I'm sorry. To uh, postpone bid number fourteen slash fifteen dash one, um, so-called interior innovations, to a future date. I'll second the motion. We have a motion, a second, to postpone bid number 14 slash 15 dash one Silco interior renovations to a future council date. Uh, any further discussion? We have a motion, second, as written to the record. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is discuss and vote on whether to change the town council meeting schedule for August 26, 2014 at 6 p.m. to August 20th, uh, 2014 at 6 p.m. Um, <coughs> Mr. Brown, would you like to, <laughs> there's nothing really to discuss. The, the reason for this, uh, this discussion item is there's gonna be the uh, municipal league's annual meeting and a number of us um, up here are going to be attending, so we won't have a quorum. Yeah, and our clerks going as well. And our, and our clerk, so so it would be a, an empty room without a quorum <laughs> here on the regularly scheduled date. It would just be me in the room. So you don't really want us to make it here. <laughs> Is there any uh, discussion from the council? No. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, um, I move to change the town council meeting schedule for August 26, 2014 at 6 p.m. to August 20, 2014 at 6 p.m. in these chambers. I'll second it. We have a motion, a second, to change the, the regular town council meeting scheduled for August 26, 2014 at 6 p.m. to August 20th. 2014 at 6 p.m. in these chambers. Uh, any further discussion? We have a motion, a second, as read into the record. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adjourn. <laughs> I'll second. We have a motion, a second, to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? We are adjourned.